Okay, so now that we've looked at um, how to run Saxon um, with an XSLT file on some XML input file, um, and the whole idea behind XSLTs is that they allow you to transform an XML document into some other format. So it could be a text document, it could be an HTML file, um, it could be another XML document. Um, in fact, there are even ways of generating things like PDFs and so forth. Okay. Now that we've actually seen how to do that, um, let's take a look at uh, some of the other things that, uh, that you have available to you. Okay, so um, over here in the XSL folder, uh, you'll notice so I gave you uh, namesurf.xsl. Okay, so this is the sort of starting point for um, how to actually uh, how to get working on the namesurf part of things. Okay, so you'll notice there's a bunch of things here. Um, again, kind of how to use these things, um, how to, the parameters are kind of already set up with default values, etc. Um, but you can actually see kind of you know how to uh, how to begin setting that stuff up. Okay, and then so there's uh, various other stuff where you're going to fill things in, etc. Um, the ones that are kind of more interesting that, that you want to take a look at are, are a couple of these. So for instance, you'll see that there is the quizzes XML file. Okay. And so this is simply a, um, this is, you know, something that, uh, that some of the demo stuff we looked at before kind of talked about, right? If you think back to uh, the schema stuff, um, this should actually look pretty familiar, right? So we have this idea of quiz grades. We have quiz, um, a student Bob, um, for his XML quiz, you know, there's his grades, right? Uh, student Cecilia, her grade, um, was a hundred, right? Pat, um, had has not taken those things yet. Okay, so that's that's the data file, right? So what if we wanted to actually uh, summarize this data in some particular manner, right? Um, and so, oops, and so the way that uh, the way that that um, this is summarized, there's actually two examples here. There's the gradebook XSL, um, and you'll notice. So this one is going to generate uh, straight HTML. Okay, you can actually see right here. Um, it's it's this this initial portion itself is raw. X, I'm sorry, raw HTML code, right? So we're simply creating a simple HTML document. There's the body, a head tag. We start to create a table, right? There's our there's our table headers. So student name, quiz, highest grade that the student got, and the number of attempts that they actually made, right? And then we actually have XSL code sprinkled right inside here, right? So XSL for every element, right? And now we're doing a, so we're basically doing a search for this type of stuff, right? This is an XPath expression, okay? The best way of playing around with these things um, is what you do is you basically get, uh, get to Firefox running, um, and here I have Firefox running, and one of the add-ons that um, that I have, and I mentioned this um, in the in the assignment itself, is this XPath Checker. Okay, so XPath Checker allows you to right in Firefox actually kind of see what happens um, when you use a particular XPath. Um, so let's actually take a look at doing that. So for instance, if I come over to here. Um, I have my, here's my, uh, my XML and XSL data. And what I'm going to do is I just want to load, um, quizzes XML into my browser. Okay. So I'm just going to come over and let me go ahead and move this over here just so we can kind of see what we're doing. Um, so there's quizzes XML and I'll drag that over and it basically looks like this. Okay. So we can actually see, you know, there's, uh, there's the data itself. Okay, now again, going back to uh, to that XPath expression, you know, how do we actually come up with something like this? Okay, well, we can. Okay, so to actually be able to kind of play around with this, all I need to do is uh, I can just right click in here and I can say View XPath. Um, that's going to pop open another window here, um, and you'll notice it actually shows me. So okay, here's the uh, here's the default XPath, the quiz dash grades, right? Basically starting directly from the uh, from the top, um, and so in other words, this simply this simply selects everything. Notice we have all of the quiz grades here. Um, suppose I was interested in things like names, right? So we say slash slash, and we're looking for name basically anywhere, right? There we go. We got name um, Bob, name for XML quiz, name for Cecilia, name XML quiz, etc. Right. So notice, um, for instance, what we have here is we have student names and then we have quiz names. So those are two different things. What if I wanted um, just the quiz names, right? So if I wanted quiz names, basically I want um, quiz slash name. 
right? The double slash here basically means um, I can have kind of anything in front of all of that. Um, then what I'm saying after that is I want a quiz followed by a name, okay? So a quiz element and the name element that's embedded underneath the quiz. If I wanted a student, if I wanted student names, student name, there are the student names from the file itself, okay? So the XPath checker is kind of the first place where you start for uh, for figuring out, you know, how you're going to select the individual elements that you're interested in. Okay, you'll notice here what I said is I'm going to select the quizzes themselves. Okay, so um, when I do that, and here I and there I actually specified the sort of full path uh, to those. Um, so you can see here's here are each of the individual quiz records. We have this quiz record here, that one there, and the last one right there. Right. So each one of those three things is a separate quiz um, instance. All right. And then I'm using um, this sort modifier. So I'm saying I want to actually sort these things. Right. Notice um, or in descending order. Okay, and also notice I have this additional select in here for grabbing the maximal value. Okay, so when I actually run this, let me just uh, show you this. Okay, so I can say quizzes.xml and gradebook, and then we'll just do dash o to let's say grades1.html. Okay, so I run that. And I'm just going to come over to here. There's my grade1s.html, and I'm going to open that in Firefox, and there it is, right? So Cecilia, who happened to have the highest grade, right, was first, then Bob with the next highest grade of 82, followed by Pat, who had, um, who basically hasn't taken the exam um, just yet. Okay, so that was just generated dynamically from the, um, from the XML using that XSLT. Okay, so this style would be known as as what's kind of what's a, um, what's known as imperative style. Okay, that is we're telling it sort of st um, step by step exactly what to do. Right here's our here's sort of the XSL equivalent of a for loop. Right, we say sort that. Then here we actually output the data for um, individual things like a row, a column. Right, we get the particular values. So here's saying put in the student name versus put in the quiz name. Right. Um, here I'm basically saying, okay, well, if the uh, if the person has actually um, has actually attempted, then show the maximum that is the highest value of the attempt, and then we have our otherwise. So this is kind of an if else almost. Um, essentially, in the otherwise case, we simply print not taken, and then here's how the count is actually done. Okay. Now, on the other hand, we also have Gradebook Two .esl. Okay. Now this one does the exact same thing, but it does it differently. It uses what's known as the declarative style. Okay, so you'll notice here, um, actually much more simply, so I say, okay, I'm going to match on the top. When I find the first element, that is the, the overall top of the document, um, I print out all of this. And then I say, okay, now find all of my quizzes. Again, here's my good old sort and, um, and my selection for max. Okay, so that's going to happen anyway. So then, so what this basically says is, okay, find this match, and then I should have another, um, another template, actually, just like I have here, starting off with template. I should have another template, which I do for the quiz, um, that will match that. And finally, once we're done with all of those quizzes, we come to here and finish up our table, our body, and our HTML document. Okay. So then down here, um, again, so I say, okay, well, fine. Now when, I, when I'm when i matching on slash slash quiz, quiz, okay, I do a match for the um, student name and for the quiz name, right, again, if I scroll down, here's here's the here's what we're actually doing for student name. Here's what we're actually doing for quiz name. Um, actually, roughly the same uh, the same value. That is whatever. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the same code. So whatever um, particular thing we're getting, we're just printing um, that particular value. That's what this select dot does. Okay, and we're printing that inside HTML TDs. Right. So that's the table data. Um, coming back up to here. Okay, after we uh, do those two things, then we're creating our data for our choose. Okay, just like before, we have our choose, we have our when, we have our otherwise, um, works the same way. Okay, now, 
you might be asking which do you use should you use declarative should you use the um the more imperative version it's really up to you whichever one um helps you solve the the particular task um or conceive of solving the task in in the better way that's the one to use